Okay, Maker, I'm so excited to be back. I have been vacationing, so I haven't really been making projects and doing tutorials. And I gotta tell you, I've really missed you. So today I'm coming back with a bang because I have something awesome that I'm gonna teach you today. All right, so for the past 10 months that I've been using my machine, I have been making these big, beautiful monogram signs. I'm sure you've seen them, they look like this. To save myself time, I've just been getting my rounds at Home Depot and sanding them and prepping them and doing all that jazz. I love them, they're really beautiful, but there are a couple of setbacks. For one, finding a box to ship these in has been really challenging because the only box that really works is a 24 by 24 pizza box and there's not enough space to kind of, you know, cushion it enough so that it would ship well. So I've had to pretty much build out boxes and as a result, I really avoid having to ship these and I only sell them locally. They're also kind of heavy, so shipping can be really expensive. And then, all of a sudden, I realized, I don't know why I didn't realize this sooner, but I can actually make rounds of my own that are lightweight and easy to ship and customize the size to fit into a shipping box if I just use my access door. So, look at this. What? I have figured out how to cut my own beautiful quarter inch rounds on my own. And oh my gosh, not only am I going to save cost, not only am I going to save time, now I can ship these. And since I was getting braver with this whole access door and making a huge thing, I figured, let me see if I try one of those really popular monogram signs. Can I make a huge one? Because, you know, I saw a friend of mine, and she's the one that made me believe that I could do this. And she made one of her own, so I figured I better figure it out and teach it to you. So look at this baby. Whoop! How awesome is this? It's gorgeous. I'm so excited. Can't wait to put it in my living room. And I think it's just going to be a beautiful statement piece for my family. So, do you want to learn how to do it? Yeah, let's go. The first step is to prep your material. I like to sand, paint, seal, and mask before I make any cuts. Now that my material is prepped, I've got to go ahead and set up the digital work. I only figured this out because there's a tutorial over at House of Lasers that I'm going to link below. Some of the functions in the video didn't work for me, so this is how I went about it. The first step is to go ahead and draw a circle. So I'm going to use my circle tool, I'm going to hold down my shift key, and I'm going to draw a perfect circle. And then I'm going to go ahead and make the dimensions 23.5 because I want to make this round just big enough to fit into a 24 by 24 pizza box when I'm ready to ship it. Once I have my circle drawn, I'm going to move it down to fit into my laser bed. Now I'm going to draw a rectangle that is half the size of my circle. So the width doesn't matter, but the height in this case, I'm going to set to 11.75. Then I'm going to grab both of my shapes and I'm going to use the function that allows me to align all of my shapes along their top edges. Then I'm going to grab my two shapes again and use the intersection of two shapes tool. Once I have the top half of my circle, I'm going to go ahead and select it and then select the nodes function. I need to remove the bottom line of this circle if I want this project to work. So I'm going to hover my cursor over the line and click the D button to delete it. Now it's ready, so I'm going to check my settings. I'm going to select the Cut Selected Graphics option, and I like to set my origin to the top right. Now I'm just going to send it over to my machine, frame it, and make my first cut. Now comes the tricky part. I'm going to slightly loosen my pins so I can gently remove my material and flip it over. Once I've done that, I've got to align the material with the beam to make sure that the other half of my circle will cut right where it needs to. So I'm going to use the same job, that semicircle that I just used, and line it up and make sure that my beam is going to meet the very edge of the other half of my circle. That looks pretty good. I can't wait to try this out. So at this point, I was pretty pumped and I figured, you know what, let's try another project, something even bigger. So this time I decided I wanted to try 
and make something as big as I possibly could. So here I'm gonna try cutting out a monogram that is gonna be approximately 27 by 28. I used the same slicing method that you saw me use in Lightburn. It was just a little trickier because this shape wasn't perfectly symmetrical and as simple as a circle. So I was a teeny tiny bit off with one of my connections, but it was so minimal that you can't even notice it. So I'm just lightly sanding it and cleaning it up, and then I'm gonna take a Sharpie to darken up those edges that I sanded over. I bet you are too, and I can't wait to see what you guys are gonna come up with now that I've shown you how to maximize and get the most out of your access door. Please share with me your projects. I can't wait to see them, and I'll see you here soon over at That Mom with a laser. Thanks for spending time with me today, Maker. Comment below, let me know what you thought of this tutorial, and I can't wait to see what you do. See you soon.